Hey, welcome back to another edition of Tony's Fords and Mustangs. I've just returned from Ford Performance Racing School's Mach 1 Track Attack. In today's video, I'm going to give you the itinerary of the school so you know what to expect and hopefully give you some insight so you can decide whether or not you want to attend. Also, for those that know they're going, stick around to the end of the video. I'll tell you how to save a little bit of money during the process. The evening prior to your track day, there's a reception dinner. It's not necessary to attend the meal. However, most of those in my class were in attendance. It seemed to help the school by providing an attendance check on the students the night before. The food is decent. I got a nice steak. And you do get to check out the track from the restaurant viewpoint. And everybody gets to see Charlotte from that viewpoint. It was also nice to meet a few of your classmates prior to school starting. Some people actually knew me from my YouTube videos. Go figure. Hey, hi. It's John, right? John. Hi, John. The following morning, our class begins. I need to point out that it rained the entire morning, very hard at times. That really didn't hurt our activities though. We get fitted in a fire suit, a helmet, and a Hans device. We make our way out to the parking lot to find our cars for the day. These cars have been pre-selected for us based on our pre-class surveys, and they have our names on them. That's pretty neat. From there, we follow an instructor over to different areas of the facility. The class gets broken up into smaller groups of two to three to four cars. We all participate on what I would call basic exercises to help us understand some of the capabilities of the cars. My group starts on the cool down area of the Charlotte drag strip with a braking, rev match, and launch control exercise. We practice locking up the brakes in order to find the limit of the anti-lock brakes. We also downshift to learn how to properly use the rev matching. It's a neat exercise to, to learn the limit of the braking of the cars. We did attempt to use the launch control feature. The instructors had us try it. It was set to 4,000 RPM in the rain with puddles. The tires chirped and spun. I didn't get any footage of it, so I'm just going to drop a group photo of the class in here. Say hi to everybody. Session 2, they did have us drive skid cars on a Comark figure 8 course. The rain didn't help much here either. However, they were trying to teach us car control and more importantly to look ahead at where we were going instead of where we were. This is a very common lesson in any school as these are needed and useful skills on any track. Our group is then led to a cone layout, which is basically a small road course. At this point, it was pouring down rain, and I'm thinking, what the hell, this isn't my car, and these are only cones, so why not let it rip and see where the 4S tires actually lose traction? Well, I'm happy to report I couldn't find that, even though I did try. Perhaps the course is a little bit too small to get any kind of speed in. I'm not really sure, or the 4S is just that good a tire. After that was completed, we drove back to the classroom for lunch. Lunch was fine. It was a ham sandwich. I was actually surprised by the quality of bread. Our lunchtime, however, was extended by 45 minutes due to rainstorms that were, at this point, a complete downpour. We were then informed the track configuration we'd be running was called the hairpin. This is basically half of the full course. I think this decision was made due to puddling on the remaining section of the full course. We were also instructed to take it easy on the painted surfaces as they would be slick. Our track session would be smaller groups of two to three cars. These would be lead follow sessions. We'd be following an instructor who would pace the group based on the speed of the slowest car in the group. There would also be a rotation of follow cars so that each person in the group had a chance to follow the instructor's line around. On the track. This is something I've done before at a few tracks and it has its good points and bad points. More on that later. The track is still wet in a few locations but it is drying quickly. We are told over our helmet speakers that our first session is just to get a feel for the car and to become familiar with the track layout. This session is relatively pedestrian and that's understandable. We complete roughly 10 laps and pull back into the paddock. We're told to go back in the classroom located at the track. Instructors cover many of the same things they've already covered while others are out on the track. Now for your guests, guests with helmets can participate in the first session if they want to. My wife becomes extremely claustrophobic in a helmet and to her credit, she's attempted to roll on hot laps with me in the past and she just can't take wearing the helmet at speed for very long. She just hates it. So she took a pass. She also took most of the photos and some of the video you see. So thanks honey for that. We go out for our second session and we are told we should see some progression and pick up some speed. It's at this point where the lead follow to the point of being comfortable for the entire group can become tiresome for someone like me who spent a decent amount of time at multiple track sessions over the years. I was almost literally pushing the instructor during my follow laps. However, one of the cars in the group won't keep up and the lead car slows so that car can catch up. 
Now, I get that. Charlotte is a big track, and if it's your first time on any track ever, it can be intimidating, especially if you've never driven on a banked oval. However, the school should have asked that question ahead of time, privately if need be, as to not embarrass anyone. I would prefer they keep the drivers who have never driven on a track in one or several groups, and those that have in another. That way, those that are building up a comfort level need not feel pressure to go faster than they're comfortable going, and those that are comfortable do not need to drive at the pace of those that, that aren't. The third session was mostly a repeat of the second. It was okay for me, but not exactly near the edge. To wrap things up, we drive with the instructors behind the wheel. They pushed the cars hard. That was a lot of fun. Once we completed a lap, my instructor asked me what I thought, and I responded with, I want to follow you around here a couple times. Of course, that didn't happen. We went back to the classroom, received a relatively nice goodie bag, or certificate. I got the shirt you see I'm wearing, and a plaque. So if you have no track experience whatsoever, you've never driven a car on a track, this is a must-do for you. However, if you have some track experience, you might want to go in with limited expectations. It's not that I didn't learn anything there. I certainly did. It's just that you may not be able to drive these cars as hard as you'd like to. Here's a quick pointer to save you just a couple of dollars. The school recommends you stay at the Embassy Suites, which is maybe a quarter mile from the track. There's also nine other properties within a quarter mile of that property, and they all run... 25 to 30% less, and they all rate higher on Google. Absolutely nothing happens at the hotels. Another thing, if you live close by to Charlotte's race facility, you can kind of skip the reception meal. You wouldn't really have a need to stay overnight. Nothing really happens at reception meal. It's a nice meal. You do get to meet some of the other folks that have Mach 1s, which is kind of cool. You also get a view of the track that most people don't have. That's also kind of neat. Okay, hey, thanks for watching. If I saved you a little bit of money there and you're looking to spend it, check out this video over here, which will show you five cheap and easy modifications you can make to your Mach 1. Until next time, we'll see you.